Hello and welcome to another Roblox scripting tutorial. Today, I will be showing you how to make a very easy shift to sprint system. Now to start, we're going to need to do a couple of things. We're in replicated storage, we're going to add a remote event. We're going to name this set walk speed. In server script service, we're going to add a script. We're going to delete the default code. Under starter player, we're going to click on starter player. And you're going to scroll down until you see the controls, the controls drop down and you'll find enable mouse lock option. It should be the third one under controls. We're going to disable this and we're going to click the big add attribute button. We're going to name it character sprint speed and we're going to make the type a number. Now this I'm going to set to 26, but it can be anything you want it to be as long as it is higher than the character walk speed property on starter player which you find in the character drop down if it's not if it's lower then the player is going to walk slower 16 is the default for this but make it anything higher than what this is set to i recommend something over 20 for this character sprint speed next thing we're going to do in start a character scripts we're going to add a local script in the local script we're going to delete the default code and we're going to need five services and just four other more variables. We're going to need local players equals game colon get service players. And then we're going to need local run service equals game colon get service run service. Local replicated storage equals game colon get service replicated storage then we're gonna need local starter player equals game colon get service starter player then we're going to need local user input service equals game colon get service user input service now we're going to need three variables for the player. So we're going to get local player equals players dot local player. Then we're going to need the player's character. So local character equals player dot character or player dot character added colon weight. Now what this is going to do is it's going to get the player's character. And if it doesn't exist yet, it's going to go past this or and it's going to wait for the character added event to get fired and then it will set the character variable to whatever gets returned by the character added event which would be the player's character now we're going to need the humanoid so local humanoid and a nice scripting tip if you would like it is for variables parameters and functions and a couple of other things you can put a colon and you can set and you can declare what type the variable is. So I'm going to set it to humanoid. So now for the humanoid, we have all of the properties like the walk speed, walk to part, and we have all of, we have all of its methods. So next we're going to, we're going to put local humanoid colon humanoid equals character colon wait for child humanoid. And if you don't know what wait for child does, it will wait for a child to exist an object you call it on it will wait for an object to exist with the name you give it and if it doesn't exist it will error but it will wait for it to exist so if it doesn't exist yet but there is something that has this name it'll wait for it to load and then set the variable to that part if we just did character dot human humanoid then it might not exist yet when we load in the game and it will cause errors so we always, you should always use wait for child when you're waiting for something to load, like in the start. Now we're going to move on to some events and user input service. We're going to use user input service dot input began colon connect function. And this is going to take two parameters function. Let me spell that correctly. It's going to take two parameters. It's going to take input. And it's going to take game processed event. 
you don't really you don't need to worry about what game process event is but at the top of this we're gonna do we're gonna type if game process event then return end so if the game processed the event it's gonna return and just cancel it's gonna exit the function next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna type if input dot key code you have to make sure you type input dot key code equals equals enum dot key code dot left shift so the left shift is what will trigger the sprinting and if you want to add gamepad so xbox or switch controller compatibility you will do or input dot key code equals equals enum dot key code dot game that ooh, button B it's button B not gamepad B button B is the B button on any gamepad so if they're playing with a switch controller or Xbox controller I'm not sure if PlayStation controllers have compatibility with Roblox then we're going to set ooh I forgot a variable just below all of these three variables for the player we're going to type local is sprinting equals false and in this if statement we're going to we're going to set it to true so is sprinting equals true next thing we're going to do is user input service dot input ended colon connect function so when the input ends it'll run this event then we're going to need the input and game processed event just like we did in input began now we're going to copy all of the code in input began and paste it into input ended but inside of the if statement checking the key code of the input we're going to set is sprinting to false next thing we're going to do is we're going to use run service dot render stepped to check if is sprinting is equal to true and if it is we'll make the player sprint we'll make the player's walk speed faster and if is sprinting is false then we'll just do nothing so run service dot render stepped colon connect function then we're going to check if is sprinting then else up here where we che check up here just before the else we're going to type replicated storage colon wait for child set walk speed colon fire server and we're going to pass a string and we're going to type in the string sprint now we can copy this line, paste it down here, but in the fire server, we're going to change the string to walk instead of sprint. Now, in the server script, we just need two variables. We're going to need the replicated storage and starter player. So local replicated storage equals game colon get service replicated storage. Local starter player equals game colon get service starter player we can actually delete the starter player variable in the local script because we don't use it back in the server script we're going to do replicated storage colon wait for child set walk speed dot on server event colon connect function now by default every single remote event and remote function you use that is firing to or invoking to the server will automatically have the player variable so you have to always set that so player and then comma and then to get the string that we passed in the remote event we're going to type context you can name this whatever you want but i'm going to name it context now we're going to do the character again so local character we're going to do just like we did in the local script equals player dot character or player dot character character added colon wait then we're going to get the humanoid and same trick we're going to do humanoid local humanoid colon humanoid equals character colon find first child instead of wait for child this time we're going to do find for find first child humanoid then we're going to do local sprint speed equals starter player colon get attribute so we can get the character sprint speed attribute and then we're going to type character sprint speed now we're going to write an if statement if context 
equals equals walk in two quotation marks for a string because the context is a string. Then we're going to do humanoid dot walk speed equals starter player dot character walk speed to set it to the default walk speed in starter player right here, the character walk speed variable, not variable property. Then uh, we're going to drop a line else if context equals equals two quotation marks sprint then humanoid dot walk speed equals sprint speed and we're going to drop one more line else so if the context is not walk or sprint then we're going to error and we're going to put a string in this and we're going to say unexpected context from uh sent from client now what this is going to do is it's going to create an error just like it does when you like misspell something in the script. It'll create an error with this string and it will stop the thread from running. It will stop the event from running. So it's the equivalent of if we warn and drop a line and return. But I like to use error more than that, more than using warn. But now we are done. If I join the game and... I get ready. I can hold. I'm walking at a normal, normal 16 walk speed. But if I hold shift, I run faster. And if I get my Xbox controller, let me just plug it in. Now I'm on my Xbox controller. If I hold B, I'm also sprinting. So that is how. You do shift to sprint in Roblox Studio. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. What?